Open Season TV, brought to you by Dead Ringer Hunting. No matter where we are, we keep the calls ringing, the bulls on knocking, the 12 gauge singing, through the reeds and the swamp and the trees and the heartland. Well, it's a way of life and it's what we love. Folks right here can't get enough of that open season. Bucks and bulls and full camouflage from a duck. We're gonna track them all when they break it down. Yeah, they better keep one eye open while they're sleeping. Cause it's open season. Yeah, and it's open season. Bucks and bulls and full camouflage from a duck line or a tree stand. in Indiana with Brittany Glaze as she hunts for her first archery buck. Then we're headed to Kentucky with Rusty Jackson as he hunts a monster 10-pointer. You know, me and Brittany have been talking about this trip for a while, so I had some work to do to get ready and you were helping me out. Yeah, we were running trail cameras like we always do, checking them, putting out feed before season, making sure that, you know, hey, where are these bucks? This woods is hot, this woods is not, you know, they got some shooters here. And the other thing we did is we really concentrated on food plots a lot. Even though we didn't hunt them all the time, we put food in strategic locations so we could get in and out and hunt the bucks going to them. Yeah, we made that bush hog work, that's for sure. You know, that time of year is either hit or miss. If the weather's right, the bucks are callable, they're on their feet and stuff, and sometimes it's really bad though. Yeah, the nice part is you guys were on that, on a lot of bucks in that wood. You know, second or third night in, we were sitting on one of our food plots and we had a buck come in, a beautiful 10 pointer that we had scouted for, and it just came in too late. It's my second evening sitting in Indiana. It's raining, it's been raining all day. And, uh, we're going to take our chance here in this food plot. You know that they're moving. They're up and moving this morning. A couple go out in the food plot just, you know, watching them eat. But this evening they should be up and moving again because the cooler weather's coming through. So we're going to take our chance and see what happens. Covert. Code black pictures anytime, anywhere. I thought we were checking trail cameras. I have been. This one. Nah, blue's better. You're gonna regret that. Where'd that hit? Shoulda got a limb driver. Don't be a chuck. Get a limb driver. You know, we were on bucks constantly, which is odd for that time of year. And we were in the stand one night and we were seeing deer after deer and I was positive it was gonna happen. And here comes this beautiful two and a half, three and a half year old, which is perfect for her first buck. And I call him to the tree. Yeah, you know, 
it's one of them things they call experience. Sometimes you have to experience it and it's not very fun. You know, the good thing about this is she didn't do something bad and take a bad shot. There's no one. Yeah, So you were in there and you were actually teaching her calling sequence, trying to show her, hey, this is how you do it. You grunt, 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 bleat, bleat, grunt. And look, you look up and here comes this buck. Yeah, I had actually went and bought her calls and I was saying, Brittany, do this, Brittany, do that. And I looked up and I was like, give me the calls, I'm taking over. And it was, she knew instantly that there was a shooter buck and she started getting nervous. teaching me and he's like get your call out and I went to go get it out and he's like whoa whoa and he sees the deer he looks at him and he's like that's the one that came up yesterday which he came up at like seven yards yesterday as we were packing up and just kind of walked off and I was like he said grab your bow so I did and he came walking out and he grunted at him some and kind of flickered his tail, perked up, but wasn't really interested and he bleated and grunted. He walked off over a hundred yards and he called him back in. He he got a little aggressive with him and he turned around and he literally walked right to me, 20, 22 yards right there. And he, I had to pull back at about when he was at 50 because that was the only time I had because he was behind a tree. And I had to hold back for a while because he was facing me. And then as soon as he turned, I shot him. <laughs> it's the best feeling ever. <laughs> oh, I'm still shaky. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I got my first buck with a bow. My first big buck. <laughs> you know, one thing about it with your first deer, you can't replicate those emotions. People try it all the time. At the end of the day, when you get that feeling of you know, you've completed what you've tr set out to do and you've had all these failures and then you have success, your emotions just come flooding out. Oh, and it was awesome. You know, she is filmed for other TV shows. She knows what to do in front of the camera. She's practiced. But once she killed that buck, she had no clue what to do. She was just so excited. I was literally having to ask her questions just to get her to talk to the camera again. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what it's all about. What are you bringing that for? I got the big camera. You'll see. Did you get it? No. I did. Tacticam. Share your hunt. 
You ready yet? I broke my razor. Try this. Now that's razor sharp. Dead ringer. There will be blood. So we just got down and I just killed my very first deer with my bow and a buck at that. I'm so excited. Still shaking. Um, we know that he's dead right over there. We saw him lay down and he's done. So we're going to go look for him. And can't wait to see him. I'm so excited. <laughs> This is my very first bow buck, bow deer, period. I have been bow hunting for two years. It's been quite a journey. <laughs> Had ups and downs and frustrations and encounters that were less than 10 yards multiple times, and that's just this week as well. Um, been here eight days straight. We have seen over 20 bucks come in and out, um, mostly small ones, but we've had a few shooters and this guy came in uh, yesterday morning less than 10 yards <laughs> and uh, couldn't get a shot on him because we had already packed up to come down to help a, a fellow hunter get his deer um, and today I got lucky and he came back but I couldn't be happier I'm ecstatic and I've worked so hard to get him to get a deer with my bow and it's the best feeling ever. I'm just overwhelmed and uh, I couldn't be happier. He is one beautiful buck. He's about a three year old, nice eight. Um, biggest buck I've ever shot. <laughs> and I got him with my bow. I couldn't be more proud of myself right now. Um, this is an awesome moment for me. <laughs> my first buck. That's awesome. <laughs> he is an old deer. Yeah, you took a mature deer. That is an awesome, awesome bow kill. Harvesting mature whitetails on a consistent basis is no easy task. Stack the odds in your favor with a premier Killer Food Plots blend growing in your favorite hunting location. Killer Food Plots, setting a new standard in wildlife nutritional products. You reap what you sow. This week we're going to talk about the all-in-one deer call, the bone from Cherokee Sports. My favorite tactic for taking mature bucks year after year is definitely calling. And when you're going to call whitetails in, what you have to do is you have to convince them that you're a real deer. And this takes several calls to do that. Whether it's a doe grunt, a doe bleat, a buck grunt, or even a snort wheeze to challenge them to get them to come in. And the great thing about the bone is it does all three calls in one system. With the bone and all being in one call, I can simply go from grunt to doe grunt, to bleat, or to the snort wheeze, simply and easily one-handed while I'm holding my bow or gun in the other hand. If you're looking for the all-in-one call to make your hunting easier, check out the bone at Cherokee-Sports.com. And while you're there, make sure and check out all their portable, inflatable decoys that's gonna make setting up and carrying to your spot easier. You know, one thing about Rusty Jackson is when he's on a buck that he wants to shoot, it's gonna be big and it's gonna be mature. He was on this buck all year and then he just disappeared on him and he looked and he looked. Finally, he finds him. It's later on the season, and he goes in to get him. You know, what he does, and we talk about this every year, but where they hunt, the size woods, the type of hunting they do, is they scout with trail cameras. They run the covert trail cameras nonstop, and once he's on a buck, it's just a matter of time for it's dead. It's October 28th here in Kentucky. First chance I've got to get in this set. We've got a beautiful set hung right here. Got a west wind blowing our wind out right over top of this bluff. Got a big bedding area back behind me. Connects to a huge block of timber. Got a natural pinch point right here with a big scrape. Starting to get some good covert camera pictures of the bucks we're after. Y'all hang tight. It's gonna be one action-packed afternoon here in Kentucky.
You know, the, the cool thing, and we say this every year about Rusty and Adam, is they are truly great friends and they hunt together, but they do it different than other people. They have separate lands. Each of them own their own properties, so they hunt their own bucks. So if Adam's on a buck, they're not switching back and forth. They're hunting Adam's buck if they think they can kill it. So they spend a lot of time either hunting for one or hunting for the other, but they seem to get it done every year. Yeah, Rusty really likes to do land management. I mean, he likes to come up with scenarios where maybe he's building a pond or he's shaving off some trees or bulldozing this down and manipulating the land itself to try to kill a big buck. When choosing what to feed your deer, you have several options, but your deer only have one. It must contain the vital nutrients their body needs, and it must be palatable. That's why we feed Monster Meal. Hey, can I use your grizzly again? No. A cooler for a lifetime, no matter how you treat it. What's your favorite thing about the site? Multifunctional. Closed captioning brought to you by... What's yours? Accuracy. Spot Hog, world's toughest archery product. It's October 29th here in Kentucky. Me and Adam's back out here after it. We got the perfect wind, got our wind blowing out over this bluff. We're on a natural pinch point. It's a natural travel corridor right here that connects a big bedding area back behind me to a big block of timber. The bucks are just starting to get up on their feet and starting to cruise. We had a real nice encounter with a nice nine-pointer yesterday. Just wasn't quite what we're looking for. Y'all hang with us. It's going to be one action-packed afternoon here in Kentucky. Start another run. Oh, don't do this to me. Come on now. No, he's not, dude. He's leaving to her. She went that way. We're done, dude. There's another girl with him. about toying with your emotions. Look at All I've got to say <laughs> is that buck toyed with our emotions. I feel like I'm gonna cry, dude. <laughs> Did you see what that trauma done to him? <laughs> We're done, brother. We're done. I smoked it, so. You know, it seems like every time we talk about Rusty, it's a big buck. I mean, his last three bucks have all been monsters, but he's going down in size. Yeah, he would rather not kill one or kill a big mature deer. That's just him. He's he's at that point in his life where he's that kind of hunter. And I think it's the evolution of a hunter. He came up. We hadn't seen a deer in over an hour. And I did a little bit of grunting. And look, and this pretty little nine, 115 inch nine, is down in the bottom walking around. <laughs> and Adam looks and he says, hey, there's another buck. And it was it was him. Hey, okay. This is the one buck that we picked out that we wanted. I ain't had a picture of him since July or August till just a couple days ago, and he showed up working a scrape right here. This is the third hunt we've had on this deer, and we are done, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> this is the results of hard work right here, folks. We, it's only the third time I've been in a stand this year. I don't think Adam's been in a stand, but like three or four times. It, uh, it's a testament to laying out and not hunting until the situation's right. We run our covert cameras. Um, 
we try to run them pretty hard, check them every couple of weeks, and uh, we don't go into an area until the bucks are up on their feet. And we seem to be able to get it done year after year, thanks to the good Lord blessing us and watching over us. And, uh, all I got to say is it's open season on big whitetails here in Kentucky during the rut. Just want to say thanks to Adam for watching over me and being with me and talking to me while we're getting the shot on him and doing all the filming for me. And uh, thank the good Lord upstairs for watching over us and, and blessing us. Next week, it's all about Mike Benaz as he heads to Canada and takes two great black bears. Then he goes to Colorado and kills an awesome speed goat. We also want to thank these fine sponsors. Look at my new call. Anything right? That's how you call the big bucks in. Cherokee Sports. Solutions for the sportsman.